Fighting for social justice, that's how African-American journalist and activist Ida B. Wells Barnett lived out her 68 years. She was born July 16, 1862 in Holly Springs, Mississippi to slaves. Six months after Ida's birth, President Abraham Lincoln issued the Emancipation Proclamation, which freed her family and millions of other slaves in the South. When Ida turned 16, she was forced to drop out of school because her parents and two other siblings died in a yellow fever outbreak. Ida wanted to live out her parents' wishes to keep her family together, so she took on a teaching job to help care for her and her other five siblings. The experience which helped spark Ida's journalist career was a ride aboard a train to Memphis at the age of 21. She treated herself in the first class lady's car shortly after the conductor told her to give up her seat for a white man. In her autobiography, she said, I fastened my teeth in the back of his hand, and he didn't try it again by himself. The conductor called for help, and she ended up being dragged off the train while the white passengers applauded the men. Shortly afterwards, she filed a discrimination lawsuit against the railroad company. She won the case, however, it was overturned in an appeal. The experience inspired her to write about what she went through. In 1892, Ida had some black friends who were murdered by a white mob in Memphis. They owned a small grocery store and were lynched by white men, claiming they were protecting the business of their own grocery stores. Hearing about the brutal killings inspired Ida to speak out against the horrors of lynching, a popular tool to terrorize and punish black people. In Ida's pamphlets like Southern Horrors, Lynch Law in All Its Phases, and Mob Rule in New Orleans, she talked about how many black men were falsely accused of rape by white people to justify these types of murders. It made her sick to think about how crowds of people would actually stand around with their whole family just to watch these men and women die right before their eyes. Ida argued that lynching had little to do with protecting the honor of women and everything to do with protecting the power of the Southern white men. So, as an activist, what does she do? She spoke out against injustice and violence towards black people, especially lynching. Ida was the co-owner and editor of the black newspaper in Mississippi. She was forced to move north after one of her anti-lynching articles angered the white community. A mob stormed the office of the newspaper and ended up destroying it. She was warned to never come back to Memphis or else she'll be killed. Despite those threats, Ida continued to get the word out about lynching and equality. She began to publish even more investigative stories and pamphlets to larger audiences. Her anti-lynching speeches eventually took her overseas to Britain where white audiences there were not just accepting of what she had to say, they were more outraged about the lynchings than many white Americans. Ida was not afraid to fight for what she believed in. Anti-lynching may have been her baby, but she also fought for women's rights. In March of 1913, she joined alongside thousands of women during the women's suffrage parade in Chicago. However, black women were segregated into their own unit in the back. Ida being Ida, waited to the side and slyly slid her way into Illinois' delegation after the start of the parade. That same year, she founded the Alpha Suffrage Club of Chicago, which worked exclusively for women's suffrage. After years of fighting for what she believed in, she settled down and married Ferdinand L. Barnett in 1895. He was the editor of Chicago's early black newspaper called The Conservator. They built a family, adding four kids. In 1906, Ida was one of two African-American women who founded the NAACP. Four years later, she formed the Negro Fellowship League, a refuge for travelers from the South. In 1930, she ran for the Illinois State Legislature. Unfortunately, she lost the race. A year later, she was plagued with kidney disease and died on March 25, 1931. Looking back on the life of Ida B. Wells Barnett, it's amazing to read how brave she was during a time when people were killed for standing up for what they believed in. Today, people can burn the American flag and protest in the nude and be protected by the First Amendment. I believe through all of Ida's speeches and written work, it's extremely helped change the way people look at race and equality. Racism may still be around today, but I would say Ida would be proud to see how far we've come.